then the ceiling and the floor surrounding her with a beautiful rhythm set to a pure tone. Timber with glee joined in, and so Venley's body aligned with the rhythm, and she felt it humming through her, vibrating her from carapace to bones. She gasped, then pressed her other hand to the rock, aching to feel the song against her skin. There was a rightness about this, a perfection. Oh, storms, she thought. Oh, rhythms, ancient and new. I belong here. She belonged here. So far, everything she'd done with Timber had been accidental. There had been a momentum to it. She'd made choices along the way, but it had never felt like something she deserved. Rather, it was a path she had fallen into and then taken, because it was better than her other options. But here, she belonged here. Remember, the stones said. The ground in front of her stopped rippling and formed shapes. Little homes made of stone, with figures standing beside them, shaping them. She heard them humming. She saw them. Ancient people, the dawn singers working the stone, creating cities, tools. They didn't need soul casting or forges. They'd dip lengths of wood into the stone and come out with axes. They'd shape bowls with their fingers. All the while, the stone would sing to them. Feel me, shaper. Create from me. We are one. The stone shapes your life as you shape the stone. Welcome home, child of the ancients. How? Venley asked. Radiance didn't exist, then. Spren didn't bond us, did they? Things are new, the stones hummed. But new things are made from old things. And old peoples give birth to new ones. Old stones remember. The vibrations quieted, falling from powerful thrummings to tiny ripples to stillness. The homes and the people melted back to ordinary stone floor, though the strata of this place had changed, as if to echo the former vibrations. Venley knelt. After several minutes... Breathing in gasps, she realized she was completely out of void light. She searched her sack and found all of her spheres drained, save for a single mark. She'd gone through those spheres with frightening speed. But that moment of song, that moment of connection, had certainly been worth the cost. She drew in this mark, then hesitantly placed her hand to the wall again. She felt the stone, willing and pliable, encouraging her and calling her Shaper. She drew out the void light, and it infused her hand, making it glow violet on black. When she pressed her thumb into the stone, the rock molded beneath her touch, as if it had become creme clay. Venley pressed her entire hand into the stone, making a print there and feeling the soft but still present rhythm. Then she pulled off a piece of the rock and molded it in her fingers. She rolled it into a ball, and the viscosity seemed to match what she needed. For when she held her hand forward and imagined it doing so, the stone ball melted into a puddle. She dropped it then, and it clicked when it hit the ground, hard, but imprinted by her fingers. She picked it up and pressed it back into the wall, where it melded with the stone there as if it had never been removed. Once she was done, she considered. I want this, Timber, she whispered, wiping her eyes. I need this. Timber thrummed excitedly. What do you mean, them? Venley asked. She looked up, noticing lights in the hallway. She attuned anxiety, but then the lights drew closer. The three little spren were like timber, in the shape of comets, with rings of light pulsing around them. This is dangerous, Venley hissed to reprimand. They shouldn't be here. If they're seen, the void spren will destroy them. 
Timber pulsed that Spren couldn't be destroyed. Cut them with a shard blade, and they'd reform. Fenley, however, wasn't so confident. Surely the fused could do something. Trap them in a jar? Lock them away? Timber insisted they'd simply fade into Shadesmar in that case, and be free. Well, it was risky no matter what she said. These Spren seemed more... awake than she'd expected, though. They hovered around her, curious. Didn't you say Spren like you need a bond to be aware in the physical realm? An anchor? Timber's explanation was slightly ashamed. These were eager to bond Fenley's friends, her squires. That had given these Spren access to thoughts and stability in the physical realm. Fenley was the anchor. She nodded. Tell them to get out of the tower for now. If my friends start suddenly manifesting radiant powers, and the stone starts singing in a place others could see, we could find ourselves in serious trouble. Timber pulsed, defiant. How long? Until I find a way out of this mess, Fenley said. She pressed her hand to the wall, listening to the soft, contented hum of the stones. I'm like a baby, taking her first steps. But this might be the answer we need, if I can sculpt us an exit through the collapsed tunnels below. I should be able to sneak us out. Maybe we can even make it seem like we died in a further cave-in, covering our escape. Timber pulsed encouragingly. You're correct, Venley said. We can do this, but we need to take it slowly, carefully. I rushed to find new forms, and that proved a disaster. This time, we'll do things the right way. 68. One family. Eight years ago. Escher and I accompanied her mother into the storm. Together they struck out into the electric darkness. Escher and I carrying a large wooden shield to buffer the wind for her mother, who cradled the bright orange glowing gemstone. Powerful gusts tried to rip the shield out of Escher and I's hand, and wind spren soared past, giggling. Escher and I and her mother passed others, notable for the similar gemstones they carried. Little bursts of light in the tempest, like the souls of the dead said to wander the storms, searching for gem hearts to inhabit. Escher and I attuned the rhythm of the terrors, sharp, each beat punctuating her mind. She wasn't afraid for herself, but her mother had been so frail lately. Though many of the others stood out in the open, Nesher and I led her mother to the hollow she'd picked out earlier. Even here, the pelting rain felt like it was trying to burrow through her skin. Rain spread along the top of the ridge, seemed to dance.